So uh, we're going to start the Finance Committee. It's uh, 6.32. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to open the Finance Committee. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, consider the approval of the minutes of the Special Finance Committee uh, meeting held on November 28th, 2017. Second. Like to make, oh, sorry. You, you're going to have to make a motion. I have to make a motion. Yeah. What? So motion by Trustee Berg. Motion by Trustee Berg. Can I second? Yep. I second okay. it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, this month, we're going to go over December mo monthly reports, and Ruth is going to be our spokesman. Okay. Um, the December monthly report that you received, and I believe it's also on our website, um, most revenues are holding fairly strong and on target for budget. Um, sales tax for the year to date, fiscal year to date <coughs> through eight months out of the 12 months, is up by $314,000, approximately 3.5% change. Um, and then the use tax is also up by 5.5% over the previous year through eight months, or about $47,000. Our income tax has trailed a bit, but part of that is most likely due to the 10% reduction in the local government distri distributive share from the state which they do anticipate a couple of additional payments that should hopefully make up for that lag before the end of our fiscal year. Um, video gaming is sort of the star these days in terms of percentages. It's up actually 58.1% over a year ago, or $87,000 approximately. Um, motor fuel tax is plugging along, pretty static, not much positive or negative, it's, it's going as, pos as trailed. Um, commuter parking lot, we are down slightly in the month of December for the number of paid spaces. Um, reasoning could be any one of a number of things, but possibly more people are telecommuting also to work these days than working from home with technology. Um, and if you look through, that's also reflected in the fund summaries. Um, the general fund, we're, we're doing well, water sewer, Motomoto, most of the funds are up compared to the previous year with probably the exception of commuter parking lagging just slightly. Okay. Um, and the only other revenues, if you go all the way through the report to the, to the detailed sheet, I would say that building permits are ahead of budget. Uh, we kind of budgeted that conservatively because you never know. So I didn't look at that number compared to how it's been in the previous four or five years. And we're at where we were a couple years ago through the whole year. So that's a good thing. Um, other than that, I don't really have anything in particular to point out to you unless there's something else that... I had a chance to go through everything. And I, okay. I mean, all our trends are looking great. Okay. So, you know, it, you know, especially with the fact that we've, you know, hit a few months into the year now and it's not like we're looking at one or two months. So right. overall, I th I'm really happy with where we're at. And um, so thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as we know, for just a side note, we did finish the audit that was talked about at the last meeting. Uh, everything from the audit came back really, really well. From the financial view, I want to just say congratulations to the whole financial uh, group because... Uh, Usually when you change auditors, you see some things in the audit that, you know, the, the new auditor brings mm -hmm. to a perspective. And it was really, really a good audit. So I want to congratulate uh, everyone that was involved from the, from the uh, Brad's group and, and Ruth and her gang. And, and then just from management, it was, uh, it was really a good audit. And I had a chance to spend some time with the auditing firm to kind of go through the results. And I was really, uh, really proud of what kind of came out of it. So nice job. Thank you. Uh, that's it for reporting. Uh, any comments from the public? Okay, with no comments from the public, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. I'd like to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. So it sounds like Trustee, Trustee Panito will be here shortly. I think we're going to move to the uh, economic, economic development. development committee meeting to wait for the chair of the admin and legal. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Open now? Oh. Is that him? I thought I'd, I think I <laughs> just heard him. Speak of the devil. <laughs> I'm here. Yay. <laughs>
Welcome, Michael. Do you want Cindy to go, or do you want to go? You want Cindy to go first? Oh, whatever you guys want is fine with me. Okay. Sure. I'd like to open the regular meeting of the Economic Development and Marketing Committee. Oh, good. I got I'll make a motion. Questions. I think the number I have. Thanks, you know, second. second. It's like a 630 number. All in, All in favor? Aye. Aye. The first item, consider the approval of the minutes of the Special Economic Development and Marketing Committee held on January 9th, 2018. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number three, receipt update on EDGE Tax Credit Program. Uh, economic development for growing economy, economic development, and Patrick Coburn is going to give us some information on this. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you, Trustee Berg. Um, the EDGE program is a program that's been around for quite some time, but then it actually disappeared. This is a state program. Uh, this is just an update um, from our Illinois Department of Commerce. It's very popular. It used to be used only for retention, and so if a company threatened to go to Arkansas or Florida, it was a tool that the state of Illinois could use in order to get the uh, companies to expand here in Illinois instead of going um, somewhere else. Um, they've removed the requirement that you have to show an out-of-state option, so this is now available not only for the bigger companies, but there, if you look <coughs> in the lower left, um, it's actually available for mom and pops as well, which is fantastic because before it was only if you were gonna do like a $2.5 million investment. Um, now you can get tax credits when it comes to your um, employees uh, pay um, if you create 5% um, of your worldwide employment and I asked so if you're a two-person shop and you add one more does that count and that's true so anyone here that's in Tinley Park for our current businesses if they are planning and investing in their properties I would like to get them connected to uh, Illinois DCO to see if they qualify for these tax credits super Patrick, any, what's the kind of process they have to go through? Did you, I mean, is there? There is, there is some paperwork that goes along with it. Okay, um, okay, yeah, just so we, just so they, we have a little, little of an understanding of it. Sure, I, I can also send you guys the applications if you'd like to see what okay. it looks like, paperwork. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Patrick, that's, that's great news for the smaller businesses. Item number four, discuss class eight renewal for 7101 183rd Street. This item is up for board. Patrick, do you want to speak to the uh, history of this project? The, sure. the two pins and various other issues? This Class 8 renewal is over by the convention center. There's a small strip center um, where Joy E is, um, open bottle. The, um, the property was actually put inside the TIF district, which is getting ready to expire, but the property, the part of the building that's outside of the building um, was not in the TIF. So they went ahead and did a class eight about 10 years ago. And whenever you do those, you can renew them. Um, they're up 10 years later, so it's up for renewal. And uh, the concept is that whenever you do this, it classifies the property at the same rate as a residential rate. So it's about a 60% savings. My fear is that if we do not renew this, um, there are some open spaces that are left and the um, increase in the taxes will be passed on to the tenants, whether they're the current tenants and they've got, uh, you know, their leases are coming up or the newer tenants, um, if it gets passed on, it's just gonna be a little bit harder to do deals there compared to right across the street is Will County. And I think that's uh, the biggest challenge that we have right now is the Cook versus Will, because in Will, it's already 60% less than it is in Cook anyway. So the goal with this is just to recommend the renewal of the current class eight that is in place and uh, hopefully fill the rest of those units that are there and uh, keep the ones that are currently there as well. Any questions on the board? Pat, those th or, um, so those could be renewed? I thought it was like a 10 year cap. It's actually 10 years, then it, there, it's, it's 10 years at one rate, then it starts right. stepping down to 12, right. but after 10 years it can be renewed. And this qualifies and do you think it's the right thing to do because of the relationship with Will County and yes uh, as close as it is to Will County and the co-tenancy in the area it is one of our you know corridors so everybody sees that going into uh, the convention center I would hate to see anything happen to that building do we these all trip I'm do sorry, we, sorry do we have to certify it again didn't we have to do like some but for finding last time when they initially got it or what are you what are you looking for for us um just what reckon the recommendation to pass on to board for a vote okay and Pat are these triple nets do we know on their, uh, I believe leases? so. Okay. I think that's kind of important that we sure. we should check in you know, just okay. so we know. Because if they're triple net, then, you know, the, the occupants are paying that. Mm -hmm. Which is an advantage for him, them, if we also do this. 
I'd like to move this forward to the board. I'll make a motion to do that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, John. Thank you, Patrick. Item number five, discuss banging gavel incentive agreement. <clears throat> Which I believe someone banging gavel is here this evening. Is that correct? Right. Welcome, gentlemen. Go ahead with this. Uh, yeah, Patrick, do you want to explain the incentive request? Sure. This is a almost amendment request. Amendment rather. request to an incentive that was voted on close to a year ago um, for Bing and Gavel Brewery, and the uh, concept was to invest uh, 4.1 million dollars into the old boat building um, downtown to Tinley. This is an exciting project for me. I mean, everybody likes the green grass projects and the new um, building going up, but I like rehabs. And so this is something that, you know, as a community of our size and having historical buildings that we would need to invest in that anyway to take care of the property. So having um, someone like Bing and Gavel come in to partner with us to do this uh, was pretty exciting. Um, however, once we get, got the incentive in place, um, they went around and um, found a banker that they would like to use the incentive with. Um, however, the banker has requested um, that it be a little bit more feasible on their end if they can get the money pay as you go instead of at the um, occupancy certification, which would come after the building is done. So the request that we put in here is that we have a $450,000 historic preservation grant um, that we would like to um, be basically broken up um, to pay you 300000 and then 150000 finally when the occupancy is permitted instead of the four fifty at occupancy. Hopefully I settle that right. So the bank is requesting the letter says <clears throat> assuring we have proper funds to complete the construction and renovation of the property. How much fourth money would that be that would be requested up front from us? So we're, we're looking at exactly it, and where does it come from? At 50%, um, it would come, we would like to give them $150,000. Um, then on 75%, complete. Complete, sorry. Um, then another 150. And then upon occupancy, the, four, the rest of it to create 450. I um, believe that it's going to come out of what's currently there um, because it is a grant. This isn't based off of anything being created. I think Brad has set aside money for a historic grant for that building. And then the rest of it would be generated off of the sales tax from the area. Then also there is a purchase of the land that's going to be used there for public parking. So can I ask you guys a couple questions since you're here? Right. Uh, I got a chance to look at all the financials over the last couple of days and kind of go through that. So. When you went to the bank, is the bank viewing the amount of money that's being put in? Is there a debt service question mark? What, what are they? So from your guys' view, what is the reasoning that they're saying that they need the money up front? Uh, what, are they give, what answers are they giving you based on that? Yeah. A couple of reasons. One is um, it, it, they, can't, they can't treat it as equity into the project unless it's money that's used during the construction process and some of the issues. Um, Another problem is because of the nature of the project and the fact that involving, you know, a historical landmark and there's a lot of variables that we're, you know, that we're discovering as we move along in this project, uh, it, it removes a, a certain element of the risk from the from the lender uh, to have the money available during the project as opposed to at the back end. And that's what I thought it was, and I appreciate you saying that because I think, I think that's when I looked at it is my view of it being an ex-banker would be that the risk is the biggest question mark that's there based on it being an historic landmark and requ the requirements that I think we're putting on it to make sure that those things stay as an historic landmark. So they're giving you that same answer kind of from that view then? Okay. Correct. Okay. Because I, I didn't know if they were doing it for that reason or it, it was one of those with, the, with your loan amount and based on what you were trying to do that there was some type of debt service that they were trying to stay below right. by asking for the 150 and the 150 up front on it. Okay. With the amount of money that you, I, I had a chance to look at this, and I, I looked at it when we did it initially, but, you know, this is kind of having us a chance to go back and relook at it. Uh, the view that you guys, you know, you've got personal guarantees. You've got a lot of things in this thing that I think put you guys on the table. So from my view, I think it's a big plus for the downtown area, huge plus for the downtown area. I think it's an opportunity to take a building that really needs work. Uh, and put it put a put the landmark view into something that really people can enjoy so from my view of this looking over this thing uh, There is a little bit more of a comfort level 
you know, for me as a trustee, and I'm not talking for the other trustees, but from my view, I, I looked at this. I had a chance yesterday to go through this pretty thoroughly. So, Trustee Megan, you would finance this loan? Well, th th there's no you question would, that the comments, you would loan this the comments as a banker? that they're making is the concern that any banker would have. Mm -hmm. But yes, I mean, the, the key is you have to give projections, and that's what you have done. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, you have nothing to show them today. So from a, a lending standpoint, it's, it's, there's a little more risk in this in the, from, the, from that view. But the reality of it is is that you have three or four other establishments within the area that have had some, some history and have uh, been able to kind of show some, some positiveness with that, too. So that's as, as bankers, that's what we look for. You know. well, speaking of equity, how much cash is being put in by the petitioner? Is that... Well, so, they, um, there's a couple different ways that equity is being put into the property. We have investors that are coming in. They're primarily friends and family, uh, as well as ourselves. Um, we've personally already put in, with the two of us combined, over put in over $100,000 into the bank account itself. Um, as far as the project is concerned, um, between personal, I, I don't remember the exact numbers we presented to the or, it's almost 20 percent that you guys are putting yeah, on. project funding page yeah, that's yeah. The, it says shareholders 732,000 is, is that is outside investors, friends and family is okay so um, 400,000 is outside investors again it's my parents uh, it's mostly mostly friends close, and close friends yeah. let's just say that my parents have been known to us shorter than a shorter time frame than anybody else on the investor list which means he's known them all long and I've been alive. Um, <laughs> so we, we have very high comfort level. I mean, that's just to say we have very high comfort level that we all are on the same page. And we have no, obviously, going to do anything that would ever endanger those relationships because those are extremely important relationships to both of us. Um, that gives you any sort of comfort. I hope it does, but that's how we look at it. So Tinley Park is 850000 and how much cash is your end? Um, like the two of us, specifically? Yeah, are you the petitioners, the two of you together? Well, the other petitioner is being Gavel Properties, LLC. Mm -hmm. the so that's what you said. The outside investor, the investors are 400000 and then there's... Um, The outside costs that we have incurred uh, are in the three hundred thousand dollar range, and I don't have the exact numbers because I don't, I don't know the costs. Costs meaning um, well, plus I think part of our the building renovation, historical challenges, and property acquisition. That's not included in what you're going forward. You're you're talking about shareholder amounts coming in at close to seven thirty. Property acquisition would be a use of the funds, right? As opposed to a source of the funds. That's right. Which is different. Correct. And equipment, furniture, fixes, professional fees, recap, and note interest. All of those are figured in as the cost that are being financed by the village. Also. No, that's the project. That's the project, that's the project cost. cost. Get you to 4.1. Those will all be the, the uses again uh, until 4.1. So we're paying 20% basically? Is that it, Mike? Yeah, you're right there. You're right on the money. Up to, yes, I mean, there's 600 and then there's 150, 450, and there's 250. Oh, sales which tax. Which is sales tax. Which, we will, you, which will happen over a 10 year period. Correct, right, 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 exactly. And the future of the business operations, uh, they possibly could be negative numbers. What recourse does the village have after all is said and done here? Um, personal gratuity, a guarantee you said you had? You're talking about from the village's standpoint? Mm-hmm. What, what is lost to my, the village and the citizens of Tinley if this? There's a clawback provision in the right. incentive agreement. <clears throat> so I think it's, um, you know, not Patrick, but Patrick, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I believe it was over the course of the 10 years that there was a lack of occupancy for a period of time. I think it was six months. Yeah, I believe it was six months that the village could call back 
to the, the, the property? There, there is a clawback in there, Trustee Berg. I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. I don't have the agree yeah. agreement in front of you, but that, that sounds right. You know, a lack of occupancy for six months, there'd be some type of clawback. Clawback meaning, you know, we can then recoup our monies back. And there's probably a sliding scale percentage, I'd imagine. That's usually uh, how it's done. Um, so that's, that's what it is. And obviously- Is that for the business or the building? What happens to the building? Does it become bank owned if something fails? The bank leans it. Yep. The bank leans it. They have personal guarantees. Uh, pretty much. Uh, so the bank will own the building. They own. They're, they're in first lien position. Yeah. They're in first in line, or we're first in line. I thought we had. No. Yeah, this they goes back a while ago, but I thought we had the clawback provision. They I wouldn't. They the wouldn't be in second line. position. On they this would be first in line. But They'd weren't we going to pay them only out of the tax revenues once that we were? That was where it was all. It's eight hundred fifty thousand. So right. uh, initially up front, there's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that yeah. goes on through the construction piece of it. The the two fifty they're talking about that sales tax. Right. That's over a ten year period, and that's based on projections on sales tax that they, they would hit that they would get. Mm -hmm. It's a fifty percent rebate, I think, is what I, I saw. Over, well, it over is ten years. Right. Over ten years, right? I thought other than helping with parking and stuff, we weren't. Oh, the anyway. other 150, Mike, was to was to help with the with the uh, purchase of three parking right. pieces, and right. it's in your thing here, A, B, and C. Well, it's what, what's being purchased is the monument on the corner, right? Okay, with the improved monument, and then the parking along the south and west side of the building will right. be purchased by the village, which will be used for pieces of that will be used for the business, from what I saw in there. I think on it was at C, was was would be an outside area. I thought oh, no, one, I no, thought no, one no, of those. Are, that's our, that's yours. That's yours. Okay. I misinterpreted that because I thought C was going to have portion of that that would be also used for outside. I, I don't believe that anything the village is purchased. The village is purchasing would be used. Okay. By us I might have I might area. have misread it then. Yeah. No, there's going to be one parking space that is retained because of the upstairs, the third floor unit. I read that. Which is a, considered an apartment. So there's one parking space that's been being retained by Bain Gavel. All the rest of it is going to the building. But it's likely there's cross access, yeah, you know, cross right. easements. I mean, there's going to be all there's, that there's, on there. There's cross easement uh, cross agreements with the neighboring parties for the use of the park. And then there's also, as we've been going through this process, there's some property line issues on that whole stretch of Oak Park Avenue <clears throat> that have been there for years and years and years that um, you know, all the parties, um, all the business owners along them, we've met, you know, we're all committed to fixing them in the most efficient way, so we have to get that worked out as well. And then as, you know, and as part of any amendment, and we also reference the, uh, I think it's a South Street, the Main Street South TIF, mm -hmm. um, if you recall, obviously, as, as the village is going through the process of creating a new TIF, um, you know, we're gonna sunset that TIF, so, um, we'd have to address that as well in an amendment. Do you have anything else? Sir? What's that one? Do you, you have any have questions? questions or? Uh, no, I, I don't. The only thing that I just wanted to make sure is that if we do agree to do this, which we'll vote on today, that the 150 at the 50 percent, that we're just making sure that uh, we are going there to inspect to make sure that the you know the, you know the work is completed to a X value, and then the only thing I would ask of you guys is at that time that if there's any major changes that happen because of it being a historic building, that somehow we're involved with the understanding of what that would be, so that we're not sitting there, you know, delivering $150,000 and find out now this is going to cost you an extra half a million dollars because of things you caught as you're going through. Right. And, and you know, in, in order to receive the actual payment, for instance, at the completion of the 50% of the project, we have to submit the lien waiver with the agreement. Yep. So all the remaining language of the agreement is stays the same. the same. And we have to we have to submit the proper documentation, which would include obviously contract or sworn statements and, and all the lien waivers, waivers and all that. Receipts. And that's all I want to make right. sure of. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But just my biggest concern would be if something did come up that we were aware of it at that time when we made the first initial payment. Uh, I also really think we need some kind of spark downtown. That downtown, not much has been happening for a long time. I do not like the idea of getting involved in 
the restaurant business because it's such a risky thing. And that property, you know, it's an old building. Old buildings are risky things. When I was with the park board, we had an old building, Santa Angelo's, that turned out to be a big thing. It was, they bought it and rehabbed it before we got in there. But those people didn't have the same financial um, stake in it that you do. You've got a significant amount of money, the building's owned. I'd really like to see something happen there. My big question is, has anybody talked to the bank about what they need to make it happen? You know what I mean? I, I, I hate to front money. I, I feel a little more comfortable, you know what I mean, taking a little less in taxes going forward. But I'm just wondering if there's another way to structure this thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see it happen. It'd be a great thing for downtown. I, I think it's an exciting project. I had your beer at Oktoberfest. It was phenomenal. You know what I mean? I, it just the whole leader hosen was great. It's, love to love to see you guys there. It's just I'm a little nervous based on past experience with these things. Historic buildings and restaurants are. Yeah, there's well, the, the reason. And the reason I was proposing or suggesting that the first payout wouldn't be until at least 50% of the project is completed is because by that time, 50% into the project, you're going to know if you're going to be running into any unforeseen problems. Um, so that's why I, su I suggested that, you know, we wouldn't be entitled to that first quote-unquote draw yeah. until the, the project is at least 50% completed. But it's the bank that's kind of making this happen, right? I mean, you guys kind of had worked this out. He came to us, we, this is the deal, and it's it's not you saying we want to change the deal, it's the bank saying we need this to feel comfortable. The stating that it will go a long way to get the financing completed. To get an approval. Yeah. And I mean, without I, an approval, they can't do the deal. Right, right, I understand. That's where, I mean, you know, the last last 150, we're getting the occupancy, and it's a pretty much a done deal. And I, and I agree with it being halfway through. My big key is making sure that it's 25% through. You see things that we're in the game with you right away. Right. Mike, Knowing what's going on is what I'm saying. Based on your experience as a banker, you think it's, I mean, and the need to I do haven't, something. I haven't there. looked at the, it from a banking standpoint, Mike. Yeah. So, you know, as you guys know, you go to a debt service, you know, thing. I, I, I've run some numbers, but I don't have all their information to be able to do. But you think it's something we ought to do to make it happen? It's a, it's a building that these guys are willing to go into right. and invest, and it's going to be a $4.1 right. $4 million investment of theirs. Mm -hmm. They're putting up $732,000. If it's their money or a partner's money, it's still their money. And the view of it is is that all we're – it's not – and I, I, let, me, let me step back from that. It's not that it's not a bigger deal that we're fronting the money up front. The, the reality of it is, is that we are we are going to watch this thing develop. Even if we don't give them the money, or if we do give them the money, because either way, we're going to want to make sure when we give them the 450, that it's the right thing too. We'll certainly speed things along, I'm sure. Well, I mean, they that, that that's going to get their commitment is really what it's going to boil down to. So if you think about it, they got the seventh and Cindy, they got 732,000 uh -huh. dollars of their own money, and then they have a commitment for 300,000 dollars. So right now they got a commitment for 25% of their total amount of their project, which is pretty much what a banker would look for. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I, I too am excited to have some spark in the downtown area, and I think it would be great and great area to have Oktoberfest. However, the restaurant business is very risky. As 60% close in one year, 80% in five years. Um, I really have a problem with the financing of the equipment, for furniture, fixtures, professional fees. Maybe if the deal could be worked some way and Michael can look it over, I'd be more amenable to the risk that the village would be taking with our funds, our money, our citizens' money at this time. Do you want to move it or you want to? Uh, I just don't. If, if I, you guys want to If I look at it, I just want to. The, the business equipment. It, it's it's a total loan project. It's, it's what they have a loan on it already, correct? Your business equipment, furniture, fixtures, is that loaned at? Um, that's what they're getting. That's, that's what they're getting. That's part of the whole project. That's part of the whole project. That's what gets it to. And professional fees. What are the, What is that? 
four hundred fifty thousand dollars? You probably have done some work already, right, guys? As well, far as what yeah, what, what you're looking about, to do. You're talking about the consultants, you're talking about the engineers, you're talking about the architects, you're talking about those are you know, everything that it's. I don't know what to put it. Yeah, that's it's, it's those those areas are, are the lion's share of that. And that's the front end stuff. Yeah, that that's also the front end exactly. <coughs> Along the lines of what Trustee Panetta said, would it be helpful if there was additional communication or information from the bank? Yeah. Absolutely. So is okay. someone going to get a hold of them, Dave? The, or do you? I, I feel like they think it's undercapitalized, the CMB bank, so far, but. Yeah, I, I don't know if. I mean, what's your guy? Yeah. I mean, how, how you got. Yeah. Are, are you dealing with a loan officer over at the bank, or are you dealing with a lending yeah, officer? The, the letter. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dealing with the regional president of the bank, okay. as well as the senior loan officer who sits in the office next to him. Okay. Um, no less than a handful of meetings. Uh, they're in the building. Oh, Forrest? Oh, Forrest, uh, I, I, I know the guys really yeah. well there. Yeah. Okay. Are, are, are you dealing with the Andy? Yeah, mm hmm right. Yeah. Exactly. Would yeah, you? So, and then Walsh, is Walsh the other yeah. guy? You're yeah, really well. So I know those guys really well. So, you know, maybe, maybe we could just talk together and, yeah. you know. And give these guys a comfort level that I, you know, whatever you guys want to do. I'm just trying to make the comfort Thank of Cindy you. and Mike that, you know, you, you, you get. I'm in the field, so there's a difference with me. Yeah, would you mind if we contacted them just to kind of get yeah. their take on things and where, where the holdup is, where the snag is? We can do that. I mean, I do think the way, you know, when they first approached us, I think we had some of the same questions, but I think that's why. When Pat and I sat down with them, I think the fact that they're really not getting anything until halfway through the project, I, I think, at least gave me comfort. But I think we, you know, we'd be glad to talk to the bank if it helps give the uh, committee even more comfort. I mean, we'll do whatever we can with you guys yeah. to make it work. Yeah, so you want to give direction to that? <coughs> so how about if I, if just to give direction to Cindy and Mike, how about if I was able to work with you guys to just work with the bank and maybe Dave and have just a maybe a, a phone conversation and we can go through some things and then if we if we get that, you know, these guys would be comfortable enough to uh, take it to the board to, to approve. That would be fantastic. Are you guys okay with that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. Mike, you okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay, I so I'll, I'll work that. with you quickly so we can kind of get you. I know you guys are... Bitching to kind of move over long time. It's a long process, I'm sure. Like Stressful. So, so I, I know Dan really well, so I, I, I think we can I can get on the phone with him and talk through it. And, and thanks for coming. We we are excited. It's just it's not our money. We want to make sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's a fiduciary responsibility. Okay. Thanks for and thanks. Thank for you so much. Questions. Thank you for being sure. honest. Item number six, dis discuss wayfinding request for proposals. Uh, these, um, Ms. Framke, Donna is going to take over and let us know about the uh, was it six bidders. I will indeed. Thank Absolutely. you. As you know, last October we uh, issued an RFQ. So we did re for this roadway and pedestrian wayfinding system. We did receive six responses, and we had a staff team made up of community development staff, public works, and marketing staff that conducted interviews in mid December. So we evaluated each of the uh, proposers based on their design quality for things like creativity and their technology savviness and their understanding of our long-term maintenance and durability needs. We evaluated them for their comprehensive capabilities, including their ability to, to assess our existing signage and um, capabilities with regard to identifying user groups that um, and their specific needs with regard to the potential wayfinding difficulties we might encounter, their ability to identify our needed sign locations and to incorporate our brand into it as well, and um, their ability to design a wide range of sign types for our tourism needs. We recognize that we're going to need to put wayfinding signage to our downtown, our convention center, our amphitheater, our music venues, our civic buildings, our train stations. So, um, and then a third evaluation was on references in their current workload, especially with um, previous work with arenas and convention centers and public locations. So once we completed the interviews, um, each of the group reconvened and uh, shared our individual feedback. Interestingly, we all went into it based on paper with, I think, three different perspectives. Uh, but th at the end of all of the interviews, we came out with a consensus, and that is to recommend that we contract with KMA Design out of Pittsburgh. 
um, high points. They have a notable list of clients, including dozens of varying sizes to uh, municipalities. They do educational campuses, several entertainment and recreation and sporting comp complexes. Uh, notably, they've done Orange County Convention Center. They've done some work for Walt Disney World with their gateway signage and for Universal Studios. They've done several sporting complexes, and they have um, uniquely some transit experience that, that a lot of the other ones did not have. So uh, we were probably most impressed, though, with their creativity and their design capabilities. So they, um, they're focused. They're pretty much laser focused on wayfinding. So I think they would understand the project, the nuances, and they also had some really good tools with regard to um, aiding us in the vendor-client communications that will be required for such a, a big project. So I will tell you, of all of the proposals, all of the estimates were within range as far as time. They all estimated somewhere around 500 hours. Actually, two of them came in at exactly at 468 hours, <laughs> so <laughs> made pretty interesting. Uh, range, their costs were all within range too. They all range between 61,000 and 75,000. And um, KMA's not to exceed cost is $61,985. We did budget $100,000 for this year, or for this project. And so um, obviously that's a good, puts us in a good position as being, for being within budget. So upon acceptance of this recommendation, uh, we could bring it to the board on February 6th and start the project as early as mid-February. We expect it to take about six months to complete. So many signs you. were beautiful. I mean, you yeah. they are. They're you know, all. The only question I had: Do we have to go to? Is it IDOT? Do we have to go through they another process? That. They, that's part of what they're. Were. So they will take us through that. So they part of their. That's what, one of the questions. So they will take us through that piece yes, of it. Yes, which is I think expertise that we really need. They did. They. Have, that's one of the things we talked about during the interview. So they understand that what it's like to work with those. Departments of Transportation. Okay, good. So. And they know what they'll accept and not accept, right? So Absolutely. some of this stuff is really sharp, and I just was wondering if there's differences of what they accept and they don't accept. So they probably right. they know. Are, so she indicated some of them are unique to the state. They have done work with um, College of DuPage. They've done work with Bloomington, Illinois, most recently. So uh, they Bloomington do Bloomington as far as Illinois State? Yes, correct. Oh, okay. It's a hard decision. There's so many um, great aspects. I, Initially was sold on Lakota since they know the project. I also like the Corbin, they are employee owned company. And uh, this company seems to have all the metrics that we're looking for. You've compared them all. It would be possible to share that with the board when we recommend it, the, re the metrics that you went through, the creativity, maintenance, the visa, all the other aspects of it, and you, the report that you guys had filled out. Sure. Any questions, Mike? No, Mike? no, I'm good. I'd like to recommend it to the board. I'll make, a, I'll make a motion. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. Item number seven, discuss, discuss launch of new village website. If it's okay with you, I'm gonna move over. Donna's gonna take over with her new child, the website. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this may be been working on this, so it's been a, um, All right, so here I have for you our new website. Right now, um, we uh, migrated thousands of pages. I love this picture. Yeah, it's it's made to get to this point, we're pretty close to having a finished product. Um, right off the bat, most importantly, I think this is much more intuitively organized. We're very focused on the user experience when they visit the website. Um, much improved functionality. Interestingly, depending on the device that you're looking at, because it's responsive, you'll see it's. Um, it's sizes itself automatically, but never losing the functionality that we want. Uh, we have things like the ability to embed a in video into it. The most, um, most importantly, it reflects our brand very well. So just a couple things I want to call attention to for you. Uh, right at the bottom, we have our quick links based on our analytics. So we've got, um, again, focused on user experience, links to how our residents and businesses can stay informed, information on our special events, Immediate link to GIS, the report of concern, utility bill pay, all of these things will are on the carousel, so we'll circle through. We have the ability to add and, and take away quick links as may be based on um, analytics. We also have um, another thing I'd like to point to you is this mega menu that we have. It's pretty straightforward as far as what the resident or the user is looking for. 
note our minutes and agendas. We have the ability, and you can toggle over where you are too, if you want to. I'm watching Cindy. I apologize. I'm sharing. I should have mentioned that. Across. She's sharing. <laughs> um, She's doing a great job. We have our minutes and agendas right here, so we have the ability. They're all broken out, so within each one, you can very simply click on. You go to the meeting. You've got the agenda. You've got the minutes. You've got the video and or audio recording, and this uh, is consistently and concisely put in one place. Based, and we have a separate section for it, like I said, for commissions and committee meetings. So very, um, very simple to find. So um, another thing I'd like to point out to you that we're ex pretty excited about is this how do I section. We expect that this is going to continue to grow as we move forward, but you know, most people now they just want to search and go right for the quick answer to their question. So this is an area where we can continue to add information as our um, frontline staff is telling us that they're fielding calls on. So quick quick answers here for everything that they, uh, that they are looking for. We're especially excited about this Life Amplified page, because here we have a page that really reflects our, our branding. We showed this to our branding commission last night, and they were very excited. We have, um, we expect, you know, well, in addition to what you see right in front of you, we expect this to grow, but we have things right away, like our, our live music calendar within the community, information on our newsletter, our hashtag campaigns, branding. We've got um, our tourism videos. So this is very much a brand promotional page. Um, as you see, it's very image heavy. So our next step is going to be to really make sure that we uh, include photos. So we've been asking everybody to really provide us as many good photos as possible, and high res photos, but as many good photos as possible, so that we can um, visually reflect all the great things that Ms. Dulles has to offer. So uh, it obviously, we'll be we will be continuing to refine it. It's not like we launch it and of course are done with it. So a living, breathing thing, and we, um, by contract, have four content management updates to us per year, so I expect that this will, this sh we are structured, this should never get to the point that our existing site is where it's um, really not as functional as it needs to be, because we'll be continuing to update it. Contract also called in year four for a complete re redesign. So, Tom, as we go down the road with like uh, our building department with some of the changes they're gonna make, Will we be able to go on and do permits right here, where they can go on, or go on and 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 be able to fill out a permit? And it could it could flow right to the building department. Yes, I mean right now all of the forms on here are fillable forms. As soon as we would connect with, for example, right um, with the, with the new the, software that we're looking at, exactly. that we can roll that right in. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. They're actually very simple to connect on the back end and work right into their workflow system. As we were meeting with public works, we already started laying some of the groundwork for the pieces. Of the okay, great. There. Okay. Great. So as far as our next steps, um, this week we're wanting to do some final tweaks to it. Uh, we are soliciting input from um, residents as well who have offered to be our test, you know, testers and our helpers on that. Uh, assuming everybody's fine with that, we're really aiming to do a transition the first week in February. I think mean, that's six somewhere up now. They get that third and fourth of February, and then we'll do a soft launch for a couple weeks, and then we want to do some promotion of this to really get the word out. That'd be great. It's really, not really nice. Agreed. I think it's beautiful. I love the 80s guy on there, <laughs> since that was mine that I hosted. I'm sure he'll be replaced by another high-quality photo. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, like to receive any comments from the public at this time? Let the record reflect there are none. I'd like to adjourn the regular meeting of the Economic Development and Marketing Committee. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. I'd like to call the um, regular meeting of the Administrative and Legal Committee to order. I'd like to make a motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the Special Administrative and Legal Committee held on January 9, 2018? So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, discussion of the ethics code. Um, Pat, I see you put something together for us on that. Yeah, thanks, Trustee Panito. Um, <clears throat> so we, if you recall a while back, we were asked to look at some areas of the ethics code that, uh, that we have been running into some issues with. Um, 
So what you have before the committee has before you tonight is a very rough draft of some alternate ways um, to look at uh, our ethics code, mainly in the areas of you know the adjudication of complaints, the content of complaints, um, and you know review of those complaints. So what we did, we looked you know essentially all over the country. You know, just just about every town you look in has a different way of doing it. You know, I. I don't think there's any one right way to do it. Um, I think it's town specific, you know, budgets and things like that. So, so what you guys have? So this is a rough draft again. So we, we gave you a kind of a committee structure instead of the structure we have now with independent councils provided by village attorneys. This would be your own in-house commission. I'm sorry, commission structure. You know, again, it's something for you guys to chew on, to look at. You know, how you would. You know, populate that commission. I know the manager has some ideas on that. You know, I, that's going to need further discussion, obviously. And then, obviously, you know, looking at you know complaints themselves, trying to clarify, you know, what we want, what the village should expect in those complaints, and you know how we look at them, um, and giving those responsibilities to appropriate parties. So. That was the idea. Again, it's a lot here. Um, you know, also, in my memo that I gave to you guys, you know, we, there were some other issues with our code regarding your guys' yearly disclosures. Um, again, I think those are due for you guys in May, so we have a little bit of time on that. But you know, look at those. Those were some suggestions that we've had in discussions, you know, over the months. Um, but again, you know, with ethics codes, you know, things have. You know, you, you know, you really need to think about the, you know, when you change one thing, you know, there might be a law of unintended consequences somewhere else. So this is going to take some time. You know, the idea here was for you to get this, you know, you guys to get this committee a rough draft as we were requested to do. I'd like for you guys to kind of chew on this, see, you know, let me know what you like, what you don't like um, Here's as what we, like as we move that. forward. Go to the fact that we just got it. I'd like to have some time to, I, I've read this and I want to go back to what we talked about initially when we were talking about changing the code of ethics and kind of tie in each piece that we talked about, which was that, you know, does it meet the criteria of X at the beginning? Remember we talked about yep. this whole thing? So because I haven't had enough time to really dig down into this, I'd like to maybe see if, Mike, we could bring it back to the next committee and then really make a final I determination think that's, on it. I think that's a great idea. I had just a couple comments for you going forward with your drafting. I mean, I think the people access to and ability to talk about their officials this is one of the ways to kind of keep it on it clearly so we, we need to keep that completely free and open however it's expensive to investigate an ethics complaint and we need to have some kind of screening process my big concern going forward is it's got to be completely independent of any administration you know it can't be us can't be the you know the manager I don't know how you populate that group how you could keep it independent because if you look at like the city of Chicago they had IPRA you know independent police review board people were complaining about them you know so if you have this ethics commission then people will be complaining about the ethics commission if we select the members and you know what I mean so if there is a way out there you know I'd appreciate how you do that I, I don't know how you do it you know, do you advertise and say, hey, come on, you know, we'd love for independent, you know, people. I know the manager had talked about clergy as, as a possibility. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky mm -hmm. thing to find a truly <clears throat> independent, non-political person in this world, you know, so. Well, yeah, and we'll, I can continue to provide you with some other examples of how yeah. other people have done it. Certainly, any suggestions you have, you know, we're open to, um, obviously. The, uh, you know, again, in, in, you know, you, in, you mentioned the city of Chicago, you know, they have a, you know, they have an inspector general that, you know, right. that does all, you know, that, you know, probably has a huge staff that's out there for them. And, and again, that's expensive. We talked mm -hmm. about no, something. Very expensive. Like yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. clearly, so. <clears throat> It's trying to find the right way to do it, allow, you know, you know, allow the process, be efficient with it, and, you know, that's the goal. I appreciate your yeah. work up till now. And and we that, do have and options here, right, Pat? I mean, yeah. I mean if we yeah. decided that, and I'm not saying we would, but if we decided to go out and get one individual sure. that met all the merits and somehow did something with him that was cheaper, a lot cheaper than what we're doing, and then had him pick a committee, 
I mean, we can do. So, I mean, do, do we have op, we have you, any? You have options. Op, so, so remember, so there's that, different ways we can view, review yeah, this yeah. or view this. Right. Mm -hmm. So it does take it out of our hands. A couple, a couple things. Yeah. You know, you're you know, you're a home rule community. You know, this you know, having a an ethics commission is not mandated by state law. You know, it's your commission. You know? Right. It's it's this it's this village's commission. You know, so yeah, and and and, and agree. So. Like I said, if you, if you look at these, every town is different. They really are. And we have to figure out what works and what's efficient here. So, yeah. So I just want to read this and understand yeah. it. I agree. So if you, if you guys are going through this, you know, obviously I'm always available for comments, you know, and then maybe come back and try to button it up a little more, see what you like, see what you don't like, and uh, try to advance it at that point. Okay, great. Yeah, Thanks. And uh, Trustee Pinio, just uh, following with what you say, the, the mayor and I are actually um, – meeting with the uh, ministerial association next week we'll just to talk about a number of things and again whether we go this idea or not we might be able to get some flavor whether it be some interest but I do think this is one idea but I do think we need a mechanism um, the system we have now where we spend several thousand dollars and whether a complaint is legitimate or not it's just it's it's not a good use of taxpayer resources and I think we need something to kind of screen out the frivolous complaints that we we get so I, this is just one idea though well again I think the key and we all agree is independence having the right, right. group or person or however and we appreciate what you've done up to this mm -hmm. point and be interested Thanks. to see what we end up with me too thank so. you Pat I, so I think I want to read it over a little further also. Yeah, put your email when you have an IG in the city of Chicago, does that person solely make the decision, or is that a team also? I don't know exactly. I know the guys. I think it's Joe Ferguson. I see him in the news all the time. I'm sure you guys have seen him. He's in right. the paper a lot. I, I would imagine there's an entire department that he's got. I'm sure he has a staff. Um, but, uh, you know, he makes decisions, and they're not agreed with all the time, you know, so... Um, but yeah, that's definitely a department. He's the inspector general, and he definitely has a staff. I would imagine. But voting uh, staff. He, he's doing a heck of a lot more than just looking at ethics complaint and deciding yes. whether to pass him along to yes. the next level. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's oh, it's yeah. a whole big job he's got. Oh yeah, definitely. Yes, but I just wanted to figure out what would be best for us based on other comparisons of other teams that do this or one individual that does this for Orland Park or Homewood, wherever, to compare. It would be nice to have some ideas of I could get you a what other people are doing. There. Yeah, I guess, you know, I, yeah, th that's a good idea. Let me put together a chart for you that shows, you know, committee, one person. Thanks, that would be great. No problem. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions on the administrative and legal committee agenda? Uh, with that... Anybody from the public wish to address the board? Or committee? Sorry, not the board. <laughs> we know what you meant. You know, with, with all due respect, the procedural requirements that you want to throw into this ethics ordinance complicate it so much that my guess would be people will not want to file complaints. Trustee Pinedo, you've recognized this. It makes it so difficult for them. They're not going to be able to do it. They're going to throw up their hands and they're going to say to heck with it. You have two problems that I see with your commission. First one is finding qualified people who are going to sit on this thing, who know the motion to dismiss process that Mr. Conley, you and Mr. Pinedo talked about. The second thing is, Trustee Pinedo, what you brought up tonight. No matter who you put on there, you put, I won't even name all the religious, not not a priest or a rabbi. You put Jesus Christ on there, somebody's going to come in there and one person or a group are going to say, he's not going to be independent. We don't like his political aspects or what side of the political fence that he's hanging on. You raise the privacy concerns. You two gentlemen that are members of the bar, I would think you're familiar with the ARDC provisions. Lykowski versus Bergman, 299 Illinois App 3rd, 157. When you file a thing called a request for investigation with the ARDC, the fact that it's filed and the facts of what are in there and alleged are private, absolutely private and not to be divulged. You also created an office of independent inspector general where you brought the sheriff's office in and you limited it to the reserve issue, but the sheriff is still out there. Maywood, Harvey, 
Country Club Hills. There's probably a list of about 20 towns at this point that take advantage of the free services of the Office of Inspector General with the Cook County Sheriff. Some suggestions. Number one, expand the language that you want substantively to cover the violations that you want, but leave your procedures under the ordinance the same. Change the word complaint to request for investigation and add language in the ordinance that says the investigation is absolutely confidential until and if charges are approved by the independent inspector general. And then somebody call the sheriff's office, get together with them and say, can we expand this? Can we do it for free? Will you take on this responsibility? And my guess would be that they would say yes. It's not a perfect example because, again, somebody's going to come in and say, well, the sheriff's office is prejudiced and all this kind of stuff. But it takes it totally outside the village, and with the exception of there might be a deputy sheriff who lives in Tinley Park and has some connection, you're done with it. You're away from it. It's an outside agency. Everything is private until they sit there and say that there's a problem. And then put in the ordinance the fact that if the sheriff needs them, the village will give them independent counsel or an attorney to help them out, which I don't think they'll need, but that would help them out just in case they needed it. Just some suggestions. And by the way, there's a ton of people waiting with bated breath to see yesterday's ethics complaint posted online. So, Mr. Eberhardt, you're suggesting potentially using the Office of the Sheriff's Inspector General Group to, to review these? Yeah. I'm just kind of making sure I understand you right. Sure. Is that free? It is free. It is? Yeah. I, I, I don't know why, with all due respect, why you sit up there and worry about the costs. It's free. You know it's free. You use them. No, I did not, but thank you. Appreciate the suggestion. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the committee? Let the record show no one else wishes to address the committee. Ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. aye.